Hi, and welcome back. Today we're going to have a little chat about drum mics. Here's a multi-track drum loop, which I lifted from a session to use from a fab filter video. But I'm going to reuse it to show you something totally different. Now, usually when I mic drums, I base the overall sound of the drums on the overhead mics. If you position these carefully, they can give you a nice overall picture of the kit, which you can then enhance by adding close mics and room mics. Except, of course, for the kick drum, which often sounds pretty weak in the overheads, no matter what you do. So I often like to add what I call a front of kit mic, placed about waist height, maybe two or three feet in front of the kick drum, and often angled downward slightly to avoid picking up too much of the cymbals. Let's add that in. And now, with just three mics, we have a much truer representation of the overall kit sound. Let's listen in context with all the other mics. Notice that if I turn down the front of kit mics, that has a much greater impact on the character of the kick sound than turning down the kick close mics. So that front of kit mic is really defining the sound of that kick drum with the help of some saturation, compression and EQ. So that mic is all about the kick, but because it isn't a close mic, we can't gate out spill as we might with a close mic. We need to make it work with the rest of the sound. Phase alignment is an important part of this, and tools such as Sound Radix Auto Align can make life a lot easier in that regard. But another effective way to make spill sound better is to make it stereo. In this case, by adding a side mic. Now, my main front of kit mic is a Bayer M160 ribbon mic, which is unusual for ribbon mics in that it has a hypercardioid pattern. But the M130 is a true figure eight mic, like most ribbons, and is designed to be paired with the 160 for mid-side stereo. Let's listen to what that side mic does in the context of the full drum mix. Let's take it out. And let's turn it up to exaggerate it. Notice that cool compressed snare ambience we're bringing out. So what I'm saying is, if you're miking a drum kit, maybe try a front of kit mic, as well as just overheads. And if you have the channels and the mics, why not make it a stereo pair? Okay, now let's have a little chat about the practicalities of mixing MS signals. I've deleted all but the front of kit mics to simplify things. And let's think about how to convert these to conventional stereo. I'm guessing most people use a decoder plugin on a subgroup. Let's start by panning the mid mic hard left. Then the side mic hard right. Then let's turn on this JS MS decoder plugin to convert it to normal stereo, which works fine. If I disable the plugin, there's the weird, unbalanced stereo image you get with the mid and side channels panned in opposite directions. And there it is as it should be in stereo. And as you would expect, I can now adjust the level of the side mic to control the stereo width. If I pull it all the way down, we get mono. If I turn it up higher, I can create super wide stereo. Now, there's a center position parameter here, which promises to do something interesting. 
panning just the mid-channel while leaving the side channel feeding left and right equally can create really interesting stereo placement effects, quite different to changing the left-right balance of the converted stereo signal. However, when I adjust this parameter, it sounds just like a normal balance control. If I set it hard one way, we see there's no signal at all in the opposite channel. This is exactly the same as the default pan mode for the channel. And that centre position parameter seems to be just a conventional balance control, which is slightly disappointing and isn't what I expected from the name. So let's disable this JS plugin and try Voxengo MSED instead. This loads in inline mode by default, which is intended for processing signals that are already conventional left-right stereo. So let's switch to decode instead. And there's our stereo signal again. This time we have both mid and side pan controls. I don't often find the side pan useful, but the mid pan definitely can be. And this one works properly. When the mid channel is panned hard left, we can hear that the side channel is still feeding both left and right. Which is as it should be. And this is a really interesting way to manipulate a stereo image. However, this is a third party plugin. Although it's free, you may not have it installed at the studio you're working in, and you may not be able to stop the session and download it. Plus, of course, you have to open the interface to adjust the panning. I think it's much nicer to be able to pan it from the mixer in the same way as all your other channels. So let's disable this plugin as well, and I'm going to show you two methods that require no plugins. First of all is the quick and dirty method that will work in any DAW. Let's pan the mid channel back to the middle, and then duplicate the side mic channel. Let's pop that into the same subgroup as the other channels. Now we want one of these panned hard left, and the other hard right. And the channel that's panned right also needs its phase button turned on to flip the polarity. And there we go, that's it. Because that's actually all we need to do to convert MS stereo to conventional stereo. The side channel needs to feed the left channel in phase, and the right channel out of phase. So it's feeding left and right in equal and opposite amounts. Now if I select both the side channels, I can manipulate the stereo width down to mono. Up to super wide. And anywhere in between. So this is the quick and dirty method that works in any DAW with no plugins required. And as a bonus, the mid-channel is just a normal channel, which we can pan from the mixer as usual. Issues with this setup, however. First of all, I need to remember to select both channels to adjust the gain together and keep both faders aligned, which is mildly annoying. Also notice I've got an EQ on the side channel, so if I want to adjust it, I'm going to have to adjust the EQ for both these channels. Alternatively, I could pop both side channels into another subgroup and process the group with stereo plugins instead. And then adjust the level via the group fader. This works fine, but it's getting a bit convoluted for just two mics running in stereo. So let's get rid of that group and that duplicate channel and I'll show you how I actually do it. Let's pop open the routing page for the side channel and let's take it out of master send so this channel isn't going anywhere unless I explicitly route it there. Now let's route it to the subgroup track. And I'll send it to channel 1, so just the left channel. Now let's do the same again. I'll drag another send to the subgroup channel, but this time I'll send it to channel 2, and also flip the polarity. 
Once again, Reaper's ability to flip the phase for an orc's send allows us to do something we couldn't do in another DAW, or to do it more elegantly and with less fuss. And that's it, that's all you need. Two sends and a phase flip. Now I can have mono, stereo, super wide stereo. No extra utility plugins required, just the fun stuff that makes it sound fat. So there's a little Reaper tip to round off the year. Thanks for watching and have a very Merry Christmas.